My guest at this time is a four-time WWE Tag Team Champion. He is also one of the head trainers at the Face-to-Face Wrestling Academy. It's Heath Slater. Heath, thank you so much for taking the time today. (laughs) Oh, baby, man. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, man. Now, talk to me, right? Like, this is before we get into all the wrestling stuff, like, how are you just physically, mentally holding up right now while the world is uh, seemingly on fire? Dude, being honest, man, it's just... uh... Yeah, I mean, the world is just crazy right now. We all know it. I mean, we're all kind of on the inside freaking out, like, what the world's going on, you know? Yeah. But um, it's one of those things where, like, uh, I'm just always that guy that takes it day by day. So, you know, it's just I know leading on, you know, to July 18th pretty much that um, I'm going to have to start making some moves and um, get my name out there again and having a good time doing it and all that stuff. But um, as of right now, I've been enjoying doing garage workouts, hanging out with my kids and my wife, and just living life right now. Yeah, man. So July 18th, is that the day that you're going to be free and clear to do whatever it is that you like then? Yeah. pretty. My goodness. I got a great pair of knees right here, man. He's huge. <laughs> <laughs> he just right. came and gave me a kiss. <laughs> I'm thinking- <laughs> The recruiting's already begun, right? The dog is obviously a big fan of yours, and he's like, "Oh, he loves me." <laughs> but uh, what was what would you just ask me? Well, I said July 18th. That's the day you become yes. a free agent. Then, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much. You know, I can do whatever I want by then. Cool, man. You know, so yeah. it's one of those things where, like, you know, I'm hanging in there until then, just working on myself, working on mentally, physically, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, and so what what would you like to do? I saw you and Cody Rhodes go back and forth a little bit on social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that was about, man. It's just one of those things when I hear my name and either if it's good or bad, I'm gonna say something back. So Yeah. Mm. Well it's just one of those things, you know, um, who knows? He might have said it as a joke, he might not have. I don't know. Yeah. And then again, it's like I kind of feel like I wanna go out there and prove a lot to myself. And I think that's going to get eyes on me just in general of me just trying to outdo myself. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'm ready for anything. I want to, I want to get all of it. I want to <laughs> dip my toes in a little bit of all of it, you know, just, uh, you know, just because I never got to, Yeah. you know, I was in WWE for 14 years. Yeah. I have I have never been anywhere else. Yeah. Well, talk to me a little bit, but then, you know, you don't, let's not use names here, right? Like it'd be one thing to be like, you know, you don't need to say I'm going to X or X or want to go here and here, but what are you looking for? What are you looking for in a promotion right now? Like what does the next platform look like for you that you'd like to be on? Oh man. It's honestly, man. um, That's a good question. (laughs) Uh, I I, kind of, I kind of like the, damn, you got me here. (laughs) I, I, like I was saying, like, I want to hit all the platforms. Okay. And the reason why is just because, like I was saying, I've never had the opportunity to. Sure. You know, like, I, I want to do the indies, you know. I want to go to some of the big indie promotions and have a good time, you know. And yeah. if ROH would let me come in and work some matches, great. You know, TNA, awesome. NWA with their old school look again is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, AEW the same way. But it's just one of those things where, like, I'm ready just to be myself, have a good time, go out there and not play a character and just have fun and just be myself and enjoy wrestling again. Yeah, for sure, man. And yeah. like, you know, and I guess it's like come July 18th, you know, the, you say you want to do, you know, it, it, traditionally under any other release, it would be like what you talked about. But by July 18th, we have no idea what the wrestling scene is going to look like, right? I mean, we st- we still might not be able to perform in front of a crowd by then, you know, so... Yeah. It's just one of those things to where it's like, uh, I mean, you might have conventions that can hold 10 people at a time or something. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. You t- know, 10 person but, conventions. That seems like, a- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, literally six feet apart, big line, you know, sure. Uh, you know, shut for, shut for like, you know, 10 of them in whatever. Yeah. But I mean, no, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's like physically, I want to get myself ready. Mentally, I want to get myself ready. And, yeah. I mean, whenever the opportunity, you know, presents itself, I might take it. I might not. Who knows? You know, it's just one of those things where, like, with what we're going through right now, it's just um, really hard to even say anything. Yeah. Well, I guess the thing is, you know, there's really two promotions outside of WWE that are running AEW and Impact Wrestling right now. You know, they're doing the no Uh crowd shows. 
is there still a buyer's market out there? I mean, I guess I just wonder what these conversations have, or lack of conversations have been like for you right now, you know? No, yeah, there's a buyer's market out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. There is. You know, there's interest. <laughs> okay. There's interest for sure. Okay. Um, but it's just one of those things that's just like, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen, you know, three months or two months down the road? You know, like, who, I, like, that's just, that's why it's like so crazy because like, all my buddies was like, yeah, we got released this and that. And if it wasn't a pandemic, we could go and do some shows, you know, and this, you know, but yeah. we, we can't, you know? Yeah. I would, uh, think, I would think some variation of Nexus crashing indie shows right now would probably be a hell of a lot of fun, you know? Man, don't let the other guys hear that. It <laughs> might happen. Yeah. I've got, I've got so many Nexus shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm joking about that last part. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, you know, if you guys popped up and just started trashing rings and stuff, like that would be that would be fun. You know what I mean? So that'd be more than fun, man. That'd be like stirring the fire again, yeah. making that flame come. It might burn. It might burn better though. You know? Yeah. Well, let's take a step back here, right? I didn't even plan about no. talking about your release and stuff until the end of this interview. It just kind of came. <laughs> Right. Um, but like, let's take a step back here. You spent 14 years at WWE, right? You were part yeah, of man. South. You were part of uh, Florida Championship Wrestling. All of this predated the Performance Center. Uh, your version of NXT doesn't even look like what NXT is. So, uh, no. so, so for the fans that don't know, like what that time was like, talk to me a little bit about what your time in Deep South and Florida Championship was like, and how it's different than what wrestlers and in, in development will go through now in WWE. Man, it was the wild, wild west back in the day, you know. You still had all the cowboys. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where like they either liked you or they didn't. Yeah. So I mean I mean, thank God a lot of them liked me, you know. So it's uh it made it a little easier on me. But um it's one of those things, it's like you walk into a lion's den, but if you show respect, you know, and honesty and you know, you can uh handle yourself in and outside the ring, I mean they like that, you know? So yeah. it's just one of those things where like, um, I, I was in the wild, wild West days and the lions did. And thank God I survived for 14 years. Yeah. A damn, a damn pandemic had to take me out, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, we get to that later, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. But, uh, but like, who are the, some of the people? Cause I wasn't like, you, you came from like a, a group of killers that D that deep South and FCW crew. Like who are some yeah. of the people that you really hit it off with? And like, you know, got along with when you were doing developmental? When I was in developmental, the guys that I really hit it off with was, uh, well, in in like a Deep South days, Mike Knox and Ryan O'Reilly, Connor, uh -huh. you know, those two were like the top dogs down there. So for some reason, they liked me, took me in, and, you know, it was, you know, kind of smooth sailing for me from there. Yeah. But then, you know, that's when I met Hawkins and Ryder, and we've been friends ever since. You know, but, um, yeah, I think my first, um, you know, jumping into the deep end, uh, thank God, uh, Knox and O'Reilly was, was there to like me and, you know, <laughs> make sure no one messed with me, you know, as much as they could have pretty much. What was we, how were people getting messed with? What, well, what, I mean, you know, I mean, back in the day, you know, there's ribs and everything and, you okay. know, people get butt hurt and. You know, I mean, it was all jokings aside, you know, I mean, just like any, you know, club or fraternity or whatever it would be, you know, like, I mean, it was just, that's just how it is, what then it was. Okay. But, uh. Okay. My qu my question is, of course, like the follow up to this, what is the best rib you ever saw or were a part of in your time at WWE? Oh, man. I know. There's been a, there's been a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, But the best rib that I've, uh, shit. There's like so many running through my head right now. Look at, let's come back to this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's think come back it. to this one. You think on it. You think on mm -hmm. it. Well, so like, so compared to what the developmental program is now, is it really, is it that different than what you went through or is it just a cleaned up version you feel of what you went through? Uh, it's cleaned up. It's probably more, uh, I mean, it's definitely cleaned up a lot. <laughs> um, that's a fact. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I feel like um, back then it was just like, Cause that was, you know, in the, in the early days of developmental, it was like, I feel like they were still trying to figure it out. 
we were like guinea pigs. They're just trying to figure it out also. Yeah. Um, but, but they needed guys. They needed to do shows. They needed to get something established. So they found the best they could at the time, I'm guessing. Sure. But um, now, I mean, look at it. It's a polished, you know, well-oiled machine going. Yeah. So um, I guess they worked out the kinks and everything. <laughs> well, wait, do, would you prefer, would you, would you prefer to have gone through this system or do you think you were better off going through the system you went through for yourself? Well, I mean, the, the system now has so much more than we even would have thought about ever having. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, uh, like uh, I feel like the system now has a lot more communication to where you can like people can get eyes on stuff and if you have a good idea people can actually hear it and stuff like that to where back when i was doing it, it was like you put yourself on a videotape or you know dvd send it to the office and cross your fingers and say please let them see that one i think i really did good yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah totally but um but yeah it's just i mean you know time time changes it's just you know how it is now yeah um yeah. Yeah, but then again, but yeah, but it, I feel like it helps them out a lot. You know, I mean, they they got a ramp in there to practice entrances. So you know. you're like, God, that would have never happened back in. So we we literally had to use the ramp we use for shows to practice even an entrance. But then again, we never even practiced entrances. Then. <laughs> it was wasn't... like my music hit. Just go out and do what you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wait. So you like? Here's the thing: is like you spent so much time in developmental. You're preparing. You're trying to become this legitimate wrestler. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel when you were like your first big chance? I feel like on TV was this like reality game show pro wrestling thing i read that you were meant I, I forgot about this but you were mentored by christian and i feel bad because i just interviewed him yesterday and i feel like i had a moment to do a beautiful crossover and i blew it yeah uh, but he how probably wouldn't have said anything good about me no, <laughs> no i mean that's an all good fun he uh, just can be an asshole sometimes what jay <laughs> oh, like the oh jay ever. yes oh. ask adam about him yeah Ask Adam, man. He'll tell you all of it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I've never seen that side of him. He's like a nice yeah. Canadian boy. I don't... I, lo I love Jay, man. Okay. I love him to death. Okay. But, yeah. like, how how was that? Like, you're getting... Re like, you in your head, I'm sure, see yourself as a pro wrestler. Now they're making you go out there and, like, dance like a bit of a puppet. What was that like for you doing that reality show? It, it was just confusion all the time. Yeah. I mean, 100% confusion all the time. I mean, they would literally tell you one thing and then another thing would happen. I mean, it was like the contest that we were doing. We had no idea. Like, you can watch it back. Like, I haven't saw it, and you, you got me wanting to see it now. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, but literally, it'll be like, um, all right, guys, you got 15 minutes on TV. I think it was Matt Stryker was, like, interviewing us and everything. Yeah. And... And, but it would be like we would go down there, and then Matt Striker would literally be like, All right, everybody, here's the NXT competitors, and they got to cut a promo tonight, and I got a word for them. And then he would just be like, You know, candy. <laughs> and you got to cut a promo about candy in 30 seconds. The people are like, I mean, of course you don't know what to say. You're just right. like, Oh, yeah, uh, it tastes really good. And uh, <laughs> you know, you don't know. Um, but it was like that. And then it's like you go out on stage and it's like, don't worry, we got a good surprise for y'all. And then we got to run an obstacle course. Or, oh, just go out on stage and, oh, you're in a cab carrying contest. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Like, like I mean, literally, like, it was, it was literally chaos. And we didn't know, like, we were rookies. We were green. Um, we, we didn't know we were getting really fired or not. Like, we were all nervous every damn week. Yeah, I bet. Uh, oh, bro, it was uh, it was literally just one of those just you're just stressed, you know, just stress the hell out. Yeah, and it didn't even have to be that way. <laughs> yeah, it kind of, the way you describe it kind of sounds like brawl for all, where it's just like you know every week <coughs> we didn't know they were just kind of making up the rules with us and stuff along the way. Brother, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> we like literally, you'd show up and not know nothing, and and then. And then, like, I won the keg carrying contest, and they said that I was going to have, like, I think it was, like, immunity and not get eliminated the following week or something. And then they changed the whole thing and then had me and Glenn, or me and Kane, having a two-stag match out on NXT. And 
Like I had seconds, maybe honestly, two and a half, three minutes to talk to him and try to put something together before my music hit and I had to go out. Wow. And this is Kane, Glenn, like yeah. the big red machine here. Sure. And here I am, a long haired, nervous rookie, just be like, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> you know, like just yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Cool. Was he like, no, no, no? Well, I'll you know make you look good here. Or what was he that? was perfect, man. Was the Glenn's the man. Yeah, like he's I can't say a bad word about him, and he's like a genius. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> yeah, I hear that about him. Uh, uh, he is. So you so here's the thing. So like you're getting you know mind effed every day, and it kind of <laughs> sound. It starts to sound like an Andy Dufresne. Like I I crawled through 500 yards of crap to come out the other side. Because ultimately, you guys all do get rewarded with this, like, amazing storyline. You beat up John Cena, see a punk, trash the ring. When did you find out about that? And, and were you surprised? What was your, your reaction to finding out about what you guys were doing? Well, that, that happened in Miami. Yeah. And we, we all were living in, I want to say Tampa at the time. Okay. And I just remember when I was just getting her travel saying, hey, every y'all are coming to Miami. This and that. So we're all just showing up, this calves, walking in, doing our normal thing. And then that's whenever they were like, yeah, we got a meeting with y'all, uh, going to the office. Vince wants to talk to you guys. You know, we walk in. There's like Vince, Hayes, Laurinaitis, Corona, like all the top dogs. And then we're just sitting there. And we're just like, damn, what's going on? Are we all getting fired right now or what? <laughs> uh, you seem to think then, we're going to get fired at several different points, Heath. Anyway. Uh, Ask Kurt Hawkins and TJ Wilson about me. Now, I've been saying that since Deep South. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, hey, back to your story. All the head honchos there. You think yeah, we're there. And, and they spill the beans to us, you know. Just, you know, we want y'all to go down there and be, you know, pretty much like crazy hyenas just jumping a prey, you know, just being wild animals. Uh, I, I think they were getting a new set. So he pretty much told us to destroy every damn thing in sight. Okay. People get in your way, get them out of the way. You know, I mean, it was like a uh, a pump up session to go in for battle type thing. Okay. Uh, so pretty much, we all walked out. He handed us out the Nexus bands and told us he wanted us to wear them on the. I want to say it was a left arm, maybe. Okay. Whichever arm the damn word on, I forget. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. And then that's whenever we lit the the wick and fireworks went off <laughs> man yeah dude and like that was chaos and I've, i'm sure it had to be fun just getting to break everything like that seems like oh, a lot of fun brother it's, so, it's such a good stress relief i bet it is especially after <laughs> getting messed with week after week like that oh, right so like, what what was great about that is that like literally like i had drinks thrown at like it was like people hitting us with sodas people crying in the stands I mean, it was one of those moments to where, like, we're still talking about a decade later, you know? Yeah. Like, people still remember it. And yeah. I still, in my mind, like, I always say it in the locker room, the boys can, uh, you know, say it's true. But it's one of those things where I'm like, dude, we need to bring Nexus back, <laughs> you know? And they're all like, hey, that was damn seven years ago. Stop it, you know? <laughs> like, just over the years, you know? Sure. But I'm telling you, man, if Nexus came back full tilt, you know, Wade come back as leader, you know, have to, have to, Solid seven, man. Yeah. Well, it was. Watch out now. Now, but wait, it was eight, right? Daniel Bryan was supposed to be a part of it, and then like yeah. he got fired for choking. He was. Proper, yeah, right? he, he was. He was too rough, man. He <laughs> he took it too. <laughs> now look, we didn't talk to Daniel. Hold on now. <laughs> okay. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. No, it was one of those things that we we should have went walked up to Daniel, and be like Daniel, come, hold on now. Like, listen, we got work out there too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he went out there ready. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, I mean, he's a little scrapper too, man. You gotta watch out for him. He kick your ass in a second. Well, I, it's always when he does the running drop kick into the corner, and he like falls on the back of his head, and I'm like, this man is an insane human being. You know, no, he's tough. He's a tough one, man. Um, but how did you guys feel about Daniel getting punished for that? You know, just <sighs> it was yeah, that was, it was bullshit. Let me be real. They told us to go down there and destroy everything, and. I mean, they still play that shot. I mean, that shot's great. It's the hell of hell of a you know visual. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was BS, man. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, obviously, it paid off in the long run for him because, like, oh, from, for sure. And from that moment on, he was the like 
why are you taking from us the person we love, dude? You know? Yeah, for sure. It all works out. So with the Nexus, though, just to kind of put a pin on it before we talk about one or two other things here, like, do you, yeah. you obviously felt there was legs with that. Like, why do you think Nexus didn't last longer than it did? Why do you, what do you think, why do you think the fame? It, it, it still all goes down to SummerSlam, man. Yeah. SummerSlam was the death of us. Yeah. With Cena. Like I said, yeah. Um, but yeah, with all the whole him, like, you know, beating everyone at the end and all that, it's just one of those things, it's like, come on, man. Like, we could have easily took over, ran with it, made it interesting and amazing, and then being, you know, make that mega group to destroy us at Mania or something. Like, yeah. it could have been so good, but it just got ended shortly. But then again, there's been a lot of, you know, storylines that's been ended shortly and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, at the time, I, were you guys in that moment, were you making that case? Did you realize that if things went the way they were going to go down, that it would be the end of no. what you guys had built? Not at all. I mean, I mean, of course we fought for it and being like, you know, why, why are we losing? Like, cause we, we are a bit like when we got there, we were supposed to be going over and then, you know, it didn't happen. And then we we're just wondering like what's going on. But then again, it's SummerSlam main event. We ain't want to, you know, press the buttons too much, but I mean, there's confusion. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I wish we would, uh, at least said something, you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the way you talk. It's like you. I just wondered if, from within that moment, <coughs> you kind of knew that this was going to be a thing that had a big effect or not. You know, so we didn't know like until it happened, and then the following night, it's just like, damn, this don't feel like it usually felt. <laughs> yeah, well, at least they didn't throw you in a big crate and ship you back down to OVW. You know, you did. You got better. You got better mm. treatment than the Spirit Squad. You know, yeah, that's true too. So, <laughs> that's um, true. Well, I. Uh, uh, I, well, two things here, real quick. First of all, um, I'm a huge fan of Rhino. I thought you guys were great mm-hmm. together. Um, oh, yeah. You guys were the first SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Uh, what was y'all's relationship before that, and why do you guys think you got picked to be the inaugural holders of those belts? Um, I feel like, <laughs> uh, truthfully, I feel like we got picked because I had a storyline where I was a free agent and was not on a brand but getting a lot of attention. The infinite and, lights out moment with you. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things that either like lights can be out or I'm going to turn them back on. You know, so I wanted to flip that switch back on. Yeah. And uh, so the free agent thing went on and the whole thing with the free agent I pitched was going for the IC title. But they were wanting to bring up Rhino. So the reason I think the IC title thing didn't work, we went towards the tag titles. So me and Rhino, they put us together and, you know, it just – the people liked us, man. It was just working for us, you know, beauty and the man beast. <laughs> so uh, it's one of those things that it was working and the people related to it. And he was helping me, you know, get to my contract, get to the titles, you know, and everything. It was a beautiful story. Yeah, man. And you guys seem to you know? like, genuinely have become pretty good friends. Like I see photos you guys had on oh, bro. like that. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's, he, he's like my big brother, man. <laughs> I love him to death. Hey, funny story the other day, I texted him. Uh, so my my youngest, she's five. Her name's Remy. She's literally lost like three, her two front teeth and a bottom one in a matter of two weeks. Okay. So I poured her two. I was like, "Oh, look, tooth fairy's coming." This and that. She was like, "Can you take a picture of it?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm sure." You know, and then she's like, um, "Can you send it to Rhino?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "What? Why Rhino? Not mommy or Auntie Sissy or Mama or Papa or Nana?" And she's like, no, I want Rhino to see it. <laughs> so, he's, so he's had that much of an impression on them to where, like, they love him. Uh, yeah, and that cracks me up. I mean, hell, he even stayed the night with me at the house. And when my girl had uh, school, we went up there and had lunch with her. Oh. Yeah, so it was me, Rhino, and Ashley Connor from Ascension. Okay. Us, us three walking into, you know, grade school having lunch with my daughter and everyone looking at us like, what the hell? Or like, <laughs> I'm sure there's kids that are like huge wrestling fans. They're just like, Oh uh, they, yeah, they, they were loving it too. Oh, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was actually an awesome, cool little moment. Ah, dude, that's awesome. Well, and you know, the other, obviously friends with Rhino, the other group of friends I want to ask you about three and B, you know, everybody, Oh yeah. you know, that's the thing, Heath is when you got released, a lot of people were like, how do you miss the boat with Drew on top? Gender's coming back like a badass. It would seem, yeah. with all the, 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 the flavor for nostalgia right now, 
Like the the people wanted it. Why do you think we didn't get the three and B reunion ultimately there? Maybe because I wasn't ready. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe that. I mean, hell, maybe because I wasn't. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I could have went out there and went through the motions. You know, that could have been you know all right. Yeah. But uh, you know, maybe maybe it's all on me. Maybe it was my fault. I will say I thought about those two and how they had to go out on kind of a journey and come back on the other <laughs> side. And when they when they came back on the other side, they came back absolutely shredded. Um, are you mm-hmm. just gonna go get just jacked, Heath? Is that is are you gonna go the gender Drew well, route now? <laughs> well, the the one reason they did that is to stay healthy and live longer. Okay. You know, so right. of course it works in the wrestling business. Yeah. So it's one of those things. Like I ain't gonna lie, it was I was like I said in the other interviews, like I was burnt out for a little bit. You know not being used, you know, and all that stuff. It just, you know, it takes a toll sometimes, but it's, that was all on me. I don't blame anyone. I mean, cause like I could have easily stepped it up at any time, but um, I guess I needed that nice smack in the face, just like Drew and Jinder got. So, I mean, you know, everyone's talking about the whole three on B prophecy and I have to come back and win the title and all that stuff, you know, but, you know, that sounds great and it's wonderful and it, it sounds like a nice little fairy tale if it will happen, will it happen, who the hell knows. But it's one of those things where, like, I know for a fact that I was there for 14 damn years. I have did a lot in my career and there's a lot that I haven't done, you know, that like, like bucket list stuff. So that's why I'm excited to go out, you know, from WWE and, you know, nail some of my bucket list things. And then, you know, I mean, if I go back, I go back. If not, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, well, my favorite 3MB memory, for what it's worth, was when you guys supported Swoggle against Torito and the WLC match. Um, yeah. I don't know. You were ringside for that. Like, I didn't know if you wanted to just, you know, tell me what your memories were of that. And, like, <laughs> were you surprised that it came off as well as it did? I don't know. Well, I'll take you from when we heard about it, it was one of those things where them, you know, El Torito and Swags, it was like, they took it serious. I bet. They took it as a moment, a, you know, a uh, spot to where they can get ahead to where, you know, they, they can, you know, showcase what they got. And my goodness, did they do that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that was amazing. That was literally one of the best three on B highlights out of the top five we ever had. And that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Oh, bro. It was one of those things that were like, you know, I love Swag, and I'm so glad that he got that opportunity to go out there and really have fun and, you know, interact with the people and have a long ass match. You know, it was just one of those like fun moments. And it was like, it was just like, it's kind of surreal being honest because the people were so into that match. Yeah. I mean, they, they got them. To where it was just like, like you you're just looking around, being like, "Hell yes!" Because everyone in the back was like taking it as a joke, you know. They're like, "Oh, ha, ha, ha. they can do that, whatever this and that." But they turned it around on them, man, and like made it like very interesting. Got the people. Uh, I mean, it was like the huge pop at the end. Like it was all great, man. It was awesome. Uh, uh, wh- do you think there should have been more? Uh, little person matches after that. I feel like there were people that were like, I want to see a tiny cage match. I want to see a tiny Indian strap match. You know, I mean, you know, well, that, I mean, all of that could have been awesome. And this, and all of it could have been doable, you know, with that, you know, the, the, uh, the puzzle, the puzzle pieces that we had with all of us. Yeah, but it was one of those things where like, once I feel like some of them gets that mindset of, uh, all right, we're going to work up to this match. And once that match happens, it's like, all right, we did that. Move on. You know, unless you're the top 10, you know. Yeah. But it's like one of those things, you get that moment, all right, and then you forgot about for, you know, months. You know, so it's one of those things where, like, it could have happened, and it would have been wonderful, and we could have opened up every pay-per-view as, like, you know, the the first match or whatever, you yeah. know, and it could have been great. But, you know, it's just wasn't in the plans, I guess. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, well, before we wrap and talk about your, your uh, uh, face-to-face wrestling academy, the one thing I wanted to ask you about, and I don't know if you want to talk about it or not, you don't have to or not. But, What's up? Uh, let's go back to 2019 Crown Jewel. 
Um, you were part of the flight that was delayed and everything like that. Yeah. What uh, you know, there was so much speculation and rumor <laughs> at that time. Okay. Yeah. Hugo Savinovich is saying stuff. The company is saying stuff. There's no way the company would let me within a ten foot clown pole's distance of anybody to talk about that. Now that yeah. I have you, uh, if you would like to talk to me a little bit about what your experience was like, and, and do you do you buy the company line about how this was just solely a mechanical issue for the flight? But but there is one of those things that I'm only to say is you know touch on it briefly. It was one of those things to where you're there. You know something's up, but you don't know what's up, you know, and but we all got out okay, you know. So it's one of those things where, like, I still don't know the truth. I heard it was mechanical reasons. I heard it was this. I heard it was that. I just know that when I was on the plane, I fell asleep for about five hours and woke up, and I looked over at Hawkins, and I'm like, where are we at? And he was like, we haven't even left yet. And I'm like, whoa, what? Hold on. What do you mean we haven't left yet? You know, so that's whenever I just started being like, what the heck? You get off the plane, you go over to the hotel, you wait and then you get back on the plane, hoping you go away or take off and you do. So it's like, heck yeah. But I mean, who knows? I don't know. Like, I really don't know. I mean, it sounds, you know, bad. It sounds this way. It sounds that way. But in the whole circle of it, who the hell knows? Yeah. But you never felt like uncomfortable or, I mean... You know, it doesn't sound like you ever felt like you were in like danger or anything like that. Well, I mean, it's one of those things like you, you go back to the hotel, you get, you eat your food, you hit the gym, you know, you go to sleep or, you know, well, I mean, you don't really, you know, like really think about like you're uncomfortable because there ain't nothing really uncomfortable around, you, you know, it's just yeah. like, okay, you're at the hotel again, you're doing this again. And, I mean, everyone over is like really nice to us, you know, and friendly. So it's like, you don't really, you don't really know. Yeah, you know, and and that makes it even scarier sometimes. <laughs> you know, who knows? Yeah, uh, it just you know that's the thing is there was so much from the outside in. I'm just trying to get a little perspective to kill any kind of like crazy other rampant rumors. Uh, maybe out there. the only thing I can say, like I said just before, it was one of those things that you honestly didn't know what was going on, but everyone got out okay. So it was like, all right, we're headed home. Yeah. So whatever. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> and thanks for commenting on it. I was just yeah. I was waiting to ask somebody about it to just kind of. I mean, there was a lot of people, you know, vocal about it, but yeah, um, it was one. Of the, it was one of those things where it was just one, like, okay, we're we're all right now. We're going home. So I heard there was like a meeting at RAW or whatever when everybody got back, and like AJ said something. Did, was there? Do you recall this meeting ever happening or any something like that? Or no? I don't know. Okay, anyway, I read it in The Observer, so I just thought I'd bargain. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember a meeting. <laughs> okay, great. All right, well, let's wrap it up here, Heath. Uh, you are working. So I, I said you were a head trainer. Is that the right term to use for you at the Face to Face Wrestling Academy or no? Uh, I guess you would say that. Okay. I mean, I would guess yeah. the school's not functional at the moment. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, it's been down for, you know, about, what, two months now, three months, or two months. Sure. Yeah, something like that just because of every, the scare and everything. Yeah, but uh, but it's one of those things where like now in Georgia you can have I think it was like five or ten people in a in a space together type thing you know so it's like uh, Richard that's running it up there he uh, has like uh, you know class schedules like ready for people to come in if like but then again you know maybe only four of the students wants to come in so they can come in and work whatever but yeah yeah you know we're just following the rules and. <laughs> Trying to pick back up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do you enjoy training? I mean, you have, like you say, you have so much experience here, you know, a decade and a half pretty much in, in WWE. Yeah. I, I, need to, I need to get down there a lot more, being honest. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where, like, I usually go down there, you know, like every quarter, something like that, you know, for spending a weekend, give them all the knowledge I get, and then you get back on the road. And then all that knowledge I gave them that we're trying to learn up there and do up there that changes. And then I go back and I'm like, yep, yeah, all right, scratch that. We're doing this. Well, when you, <laughs> say, if, when you say it changes, is it because WWE's protocols are always kind of changing and what they're looking for and things like that? Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things like one day they love headlocks. Next week they don't. You know, <laughs> why Why are you getting clothesline over the top rope? Why don't you go through the ropes? You know, it's just 
you know, just, you know, people do the same thing sometimes in the matches and then it becomes rhetorical and, all right, stop doing that stuff. Think of something else. So if you had to give advice to a young wrestler right now who is looking to try to get the attention of WWE or start off on a career, what would be that advice to them? I mean, always learn to craft. That's a fact, because if you can't handle yourself in the ring, you don't need to be in it. Um, but, I mean, have a personality, man. You know, go out there and not don't give a damn if you fall on your ass and embarrass yourself. You know, like, uh, it's one of those things to me, it's like uh, personalities and charisma goes a long way in the wrestling business. Yeah. And you got to have a good look. I mean, whatever your mindset is and whatever you want to, you know, have out there, I mean, yeah, do it, live it, try it. Awesome. It's kind of hard when you don't have a damn crowd to perform it in front of. <laughs> I was about to say, man, it's like this is all well and good, and I feel like I'm still asking you questions <sighs> as if the business is normal. But this is about hell. How- no, it ain't normal, man. Yeah, you watched it. It's yeah. crazy. What do you think of these no crowd shows? Last, I know I've taken you way over the time I told you I was going to go. To- Brother, I hate it. Yeah, everyone hates it because yeah. the people is what makes it. My goodness, you know, like when I when I was a heel. I, I, the best thing was whenever I would just have a dude in the hole and I would just hear something, you know, like someone would say, oh, you suck, you know, and I'm like, you shut their mouth, you know, just go off on them. Like, that's the best feeling in the world. But if I have someone in the hole with no one there and I'm just like, shut your mouth, people's going to be like, what the hell is he talking about? What, is he okay? Do you so think, we need to check his head. Do you think they should stop doing these and just show like retro Raws and stuff? I mean, I feel like there's... No. Oh, and no. it goes deeper than just oh should they just show highlights and clips because like when when you're signed in a contract with a big you know television company or whatever you're like obligated to do live events you're obligated to just only do like recordings you're obligated to do just you know few things in the contract mm-hmm. so it's one of those things where you have to go live you know even if there ain't no one there because you already signed the dotted line, you know? So, but I mean, it would seem you would think that Fox and NBC would have like some flexibility with companies right now, considering the circumstance. And you're saying that from your belief, that would not be the case. Well, I mean, look what's going on. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just <laughs> I don't either. Questions. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Not the hell if I know. Uh, that's, that's above my head, man. And it's yeah. like I, I'm the guy that walks out to hopefully semi cool music and get to have fun for 15 minutes, which you're good at, you know. Yeah, of course, I try to be. Yeah. Well, anyway, he I, I took you away over time. I'd love to have you back another time. We didn't even get to talk about social outcasts, right? The highlight <laughs> of your of your time. There. Hey, man, I, we got into a movie, man. Marine Five. That's true. Oh, that's right. You know. That was, was it five? Yeah, it was Marine five. Was it five? Four, five? I want to say five. <laughs> you should I'm stick. I'm sticking with five. All right. Well, you know what? Yeah. The next before we talk next time, I'll go watch that film and I'll take. Please some do. Time, and then we can we can bandy we, you know bandy some ba- uh, banter about that you know. Yeah, for sure. Let's do that. All right, Heath. Uh, do you <laughs> want to, anything you want to plug, promote, put over here before we wrap up the interview today, brother? This is all so new to my ass. It's like uh. I got some t-shirts on pro wrestling tees and like I got other things in the works, you know, that's coming up that I've had, you know, working before I even got released. So, you know, we're just trying stuff out and figuring it out, but yeah, I got some merch on pro wrestling tees if anyone wants to grab some. 